our Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One. Hi, the purpose of today's video is to discuss are the striped bass overpopulated in Lake Lanier? So the first thing to discuss here is the ecological meaning of overpopulated. You know, most striped bass anglers in Lanier know that on any given day, there's lots of places the striped bass can be other than where the angler is putting his bait. But from a scientific viewpoint, overpopulation is considered relative to the carrying capacity of the ecosystem rather than the desires of the anglers. Fertile farmland in productive areas might support over 25 deer per square mile, whereas forests with closed canopies and very little edge, uh, if they've got that many deer, it's gonna, the deer are going to be skinny, the deer are going to be slow growing, uh, and they're going to have reduced reproductive capacity. Because the carrying capacity of forests with closed canopies is much smaller than the carrying capacity of fertile farmland for deer. Likewise, the well-watered pastures of East Texas often support a hundred head of cattle on a hundred acres, and those cattle are fat, happy, and productive. In contrast, trying to support even half that many cattle on the dry brown pastures of West Texas would lead to thin, slow-growing cattle until the rancher thinned the herd to be in more, more in line with the carrying capacity of his pastures. In the same way, fishery scientists consider whether a system is within its carrying capacity for a given species by using the relative weight of fish as a measure of body condition. Plump fish, fat fish, they grow fast and are more likely to support a trophy fishery. Thin fish, are slow growing and they can result when a lake is above its carrying capacity for the species you know combined with strong food competitors you know even the lush green pastures of east texas might not support a hundred cattle on a hundred acres if the rancher tries to put 500 sheep in there with them the relative weight is simply the ratio of the actual weight of an individual fish divided by the expected weight or the standard weight for a fish of the same length of that species. The expected weight formula for striped bass was determined by weighing and measuring thousands of landlocked striped bass from dozens of lakes and reservoirs in North America. Fish at or above their expected weight for a given weight, I'm sorry, fish at or above their expected weight for a given length have relative weights above 100% and they're healthy and fast growing. These lakes and reservoirs are the best trophy fisheries for a given species. Fish well below their expected weight have relative weights under 90%. These fisheries may provide high levels of satisfaction for ordinary anglers who don't mind catching thinner, slower growing fish. But just the skinny cattle and thin deer suggest those systems are above their carrying capacity. If most samples from a given lake are thin fish, it demonstrates that species is overpopulated relative to the carrying capacity of the system. The standard weight curve is shown on the screen for striped bass. A healthy fish with a total length of 20 inches would have an expected weight of 3.58 pounds. If the actual weight of the fish were 3 pounds exactly, the relative weight would be 83.7%, indicating that this, that specimen is about 16% underweight. Similarly, a healthy fish with a total length of 30 inches would have an expected, an expected weight of 12.13 pounds. If the actual weight of that fish were 10 pounds exactly, its relative weight would be 82.5% or about 17% underweight. More details on weighing and measuring fish and applying this formula are given in my video, Is That Fish Really Fat? 
Results of weighing and measuring a sample of 25 striped bass from Lake Lanier are shown on the screen. All 25 fish have relative weights significantly below 100%, ranging from a high of 95.4% to a low of 67.5%. The average relative weight of striped bass in Lake Lanier is 81.9%, with an, an uncertainty of the mean of 1.3%. And for the techno geeks out there, the uncertainty is computed as the standard error of the mean. This indicates that striped bass in Lake Lanier tend to be very thin. The lake is overpopulated relative to its carrying capacity, and these thin fish will grow much slower than, than well-fed well fish would grow. The trend line of relative weight versus total length has a negative slope with a correlation coefficient of negative 0.411. This shows a mild trend for striped bass to get even thinner as they grow longer. It gets progressively harder for larger fish to maintain body condition with the available forage. In one published study, of relative weights in striped bass in 43 different lakes and reservoirs, the fish were fatter than Lanier striped bass in 37 out of 43 reservoirs. Only five of the 43 reservoirs had striped bass that were thinner than in Lake Lanier. One of the reservoirs was about the same. Compared to most reservoirs with healthy populations of striped bass, the fish in Lake Lanier are just not eating very well. The underfed striped bass population in Lake Lanier is likely due to several contributing factors. One, high stocking rates relative to typical mortality in early life stages. Two, lots of catch and release. Three, there's a very high population of spotted bass, and spotted bass are a strong food competitor with the striped bass. The spotted bass in Lake Lanier have a mean relative weight close to 80%, indicating that they are also well above the carrying capacity for spotted bass in Lake Lanier. In contrast, channel catfish are not a strong food competitor uh, with striped bass, and they have a mean relative weight over 95% in Lake Lanier, indicating that there's a much better ecological balance for the channel catfish in Lake Lanier. Four, being a blueback herring dominated forage base in Lanier. You know, bluebacks have lower productivity in most of the reservoirs since they are simply less efficient than shad at converting plankton into fish food for the forage base uh, for the higher trophic levels, the, the fish that depend on the shad or the bluebacks in that given lake. Five, uh, Lake Lanier has much lower levels of primary productivity over the past 20 years than it did before that, and this is due to strict EPA regulations on nitrogen and phosphorus. You know, just as a pasture in East Texas can feed more cattle, if it's well fertilized, more nitrogen and phosphorus would, through the food chain, end up feeding more striped bass in Lake Lanier. Now many of these factors are out of the control of sports anglers, as even the needed political pressures extend far beyond the powers of the Georgia DNR. But in the same way that deer hunters can thin the herd in an un overpopulated area, and that a farmer can take cattle off overutilized pasture, anglers can harvest more striped bass and their strongest food and their strongest food competitors. You know, anglers will be helping out the striped bass by keeping more spotted bass, keeping more flathead catfish, and keeping more gar. There are too many hungry mouths to feed in Lake Lanier, and by increasing the harvest, the remaining fish will get fatter and grow faster. When I stand in glory, I will see.
his face and there I'll serve my king forever in that holy place thank you oh my father for giving us your son and leave 